Welcome to this aspiring medics tutorial on medical ethics. My name's Luke and in this session we're going to look through the four pillars of medical ethics. So we're going to start with what are the four pillars of medical ethics, then we're going to review the four individual pillars and their importance, then we're going to look at how to approach an ethical question using the pillars, and finally we're going to look at a mock question using the pillars. So Introduction, medical ethics are the moral principles that those in the medical profession conduct themselves by. And the four pillars of medical ethics are four key principles that are used to guide our moral judgment within medical ethics. They're incredibly important as they're a useful way to summarize the guiding principles in medical ethics. And they're very important in structuring our arguments, particularly in a medical school interview. And they're gonna be really important in the future as well as they'll inform a lot of your clinical decision-making. So here are the four pillars of medical ethics, autonomy, non-maleficence, beneficence, and justice. And we're gonna go through each four of these individually and seeing how they can be applied to issues within medical ethics. So the essence of autonomy is patient choice. The patient is responsible for decision-making. Doctors cannot impose treatment onto an individual and they are in control of their own care. And this protects against corruption within healthcare and also empowers patients. And it comes into the issue of applicability within autonomy. So autonomy, patient choice extends to all patients with capacity. And this issue of capacity is really important within autonomy. And there will be a future video that focuses purely on capacity. But in essence, all patients who are over 18 are assumed to have capacity. And this only changes if a doctor thinks that this um, patient choice may be impacted by any mental health, um, mental health issues that a patient might have. Um, so doctors can only make decisions on behalf of a patient if they meet a certain um, list of criteria. Um, and we'll go through this in another video looking at the Mental Health Act of 2005. Um, so patient-centered care, um, autonomy is really important in this. It encourages patients to take an active role in their own health care. Um, and we'll look at patient-centered care again in a future video. And autonomy is incredibly important for a patient-doctor relationship. So if the patient is aware that all decisions are made in the, their best interest, then it um, maintains patient trust in the medical profession, which is really important. The next pillar of medical ethics that we're going to look at is non-maleficence. So when you become a doctor, you take something called the Hippocratic Oath. And this Hippocratic Oath is primum, primum non nocere, first do no harm. And this is the element of non-maleficence. So you promise to do no harm, but to avoid all harm to patients, both directly or indirectly as a result of neglect. And neglect is gonna be, again, another focus of a future video. It also sets a useful threshold for treatment. So does a, if a treatment causes more harm than good, is it not ethical, is it not moral? Because it's going against this pillar of medical ethics. And it's a constant in clinical practice. So all decisions should be made in the, a, with the aim to avoid patient harm. So beneficence, the element of this is doing good. So it ensures that all clinical decisions are made for the benefit of the patient and in the best interest of the patient. But it's quite complex beneficence. It's more complex than non-maleficence. For example, chemotherapy. This is a decision that in the long term does good for the patient because it increases their chances of going into remission for cancer or having a better outcome for cancer. But actually, it is in a way doing harm because of the painful side effects. So beneficence gets quite confusing in the long term versus the short term is short term harm moral if you want to have a long term doing good. Um, so beneficence is much more important in sort of ranking decisions, whereas non-maleficence is a constant. Beneficence is more useful. So what, given that all of these treatments don't do any harm, which one of these does the most good? And it's useful in thinking about decisions in that way. But like I just touched on, it does have overlap with non-maleficence. It's sometimes useful to think about it in a more basic sense. So beneficence is actively doing good, whereas non-maleficence is actively avoiding harm. And it should become more clear the difference between them as we start approaching some ethical questions. And justice is the final pillar of medical ethics. So it's all about fairness. So is your decision ethical? And you have to consider the wider community. Is it fair for the wider community, this decision that you're making? Legality as well, that's an element of justice. Does your decision comply with the law and is it in keeping with the rights of the patient? And justice also incorporates equality. So it ensures that no patients are disadvantaged by the decision that you're making. So we've had a look at the four pillars of medical ethics and reviewed each of these individual pillars and their importance. Now we're gonna look at how to approach an ethical question using the pillars. 
So you can use the pillars to structure your answer and you consider the question regarding each of these four pillars. So say, for example, if you have a question on abortion, you consider you can consider um, the issue on um, in regards to each of the four pillars and it's a very useful way to structure your answer. However, this is something that I found quite confusing when I started my interview process. If you're using the pillars to structure your answer, there's no need to use all of the pillars in your answer. It's just some cases, one pillar is not as necessary as another and it's not as important as another. And it could just be drawing out your answer, trying to find a reason um, to satisfy this pillar. So you don't have to use all of them, but it's a very useful way to structure your argument. Uh, using the pillars improves the quality of your answer, so better quality answers, um, are, which are more concise and cover all aspects of medical ethics. And they're also useful to consider your own views. So before the medicine interview, the, your medical interview, you can look at some of the ethical issues that we're going to touch on in later videos. And you can think, how do I think about this? What, what are my feelings on this issue? And you can figure that out through going down the four pillars. So how does this satisfy justice? How does this satisfy non-maleficent? So we've looked at how to approach an ethical question using the pillars, and now we're going to look at a mock question using the pillars. But first, we're going to look at some top interview tips when tackling an ethical question using the pillars. So take a neutral side. We, we, we talked about this before in a balanced argument sort of way, uh, but you need to explore all possible sides and all options, and your answer has to focus equally on the pros and the cons, and that's how you'll score highly. If you let your own personal views override or you focus too much on one side of the argument, you can lose marks. So make sure you have a neutral and balanced side balanced argument. So acknowledge the controversy of the topic. You know, these are very complex and controversial issues, and you're allowed to say that. You're allowed to say to the interviewer, this is a very complex issue. It's very ethically rich. You know, there's lots of different elements that we can focus on here, because that will show that you have an understanding of the complexity of medical ethics. Prove your knowledge. So make sure you use statistics, you use case studies, you use different previous medical issues in your answer, because it shows that you have an insight into medicine. It shows that you have knowledge surrounding medical ethics and stay calm. So you, you don't need to involve, um, you, you basically just need to work through these decisions um, and you need to work through these frameworks as you go and don't be put off by however daunting an ethical question seems at the beginning or how complex it will be. You will be prepared for these. So you just need to make sure that you stay calm and um, use all, all, all the knowledge that you have. So how to approach this question, how to approach a question using um, the pillars. So firstly, introduce the topic, like I said, including any prior knowledge to showcase your wider reading or um, wider knowledge surrounding the topic. State the four pillars of medical ethics. So tell the interviewer that you're gonna use these to structure your ar argument and say the four pillars of medical ethics are beneficence, non-maleficence, justice, and autonomy, because it shows a good understanding. Go through your argument, go through both sides with support from the four, four pillars. And finally, reach a balanced conclusion and reaching your own judgment with valid reasoning. So we're gonna apply the four pillars of medicine to the, this question. Should childhood vaccination be compulsory? So pause the video and have a moment to think about how the four pillars of medical ethics could apply to this question. So we're gonna go through each pillar and look at how they could apply. So autonomy. The patient should have the right to decide whether they or their children receive vaccination. So therefore, compulsory childhood vaccination goes against autonomy. However, looking at it in beneficence, giving the patient the vaccination will be beneficial for them as it will protect them against potentially fatal infections. Looking at non-maleficence, which isn't as relevant in this, but you can still include it. Are you going to do harm to the patient by not giving them the vaccine? That's more of a long-term consideration. And justice, compulsory vaccination would benefit the wider community by like by um, reaching herd immunity and protecting more vulnerable mem members of society. So what you can see here is that it can be quite complex and there are questions, there are ethical issues that will satisfy one pillar and go against another pillar. And you can acknowledge this, you can acknowledge this in the complexity. Um, and you can also, alongside these four pillars, offer alternatives. Say, for example, in the compulsory vaccination question, you could say, I don't think that compulsory vaccination should be the case, but I do think that we should increase education surrounding vaccinations for children and adults, because this satisfies the beneficence and justice element by increasing vaccination uptake, but it maintains patient autonomy. So you can also add in these alternatives within your answer, and that will really strengthen them. Great, so in this session, we've had a look at what the four pillars of medical ethics are. We've reviewed the four individual pillars and their importance. We've looked at how to approach an ethical question using the pillars, and we've looked at a mock question using the pillars. So finally, we've got some aspiring medics top tips. 
So you are likely to come across a medical ethics question, and usually you can apply the four pillars of medicine, medical ethics to them. And they're a very useful way to structure your argument and make sure you've covered all bases. Read around ethical topics using our website, theaspiringmedics.co.uk. Use the four pillars to dissect an eth ethical issue if you're struggling, if you're doing some interview preparation and you really can't get your head around an issue, break it down into the four pillars of medical ethics and work through it in that state. And stay neutral on ethical questions. It is really difficult, but you have to give a balanced argument and represent both sides of the argument to score highly. So in this video, we've, we've had an overview of the four pillars of medical ethics, and hopefully now you're competent in using them in some of the ethical dilemmas that we will come across in the next few videos. To unlock the rest of the videos in this category, make sure to purchase the Aspiring Medics online interview course. We have over 50 videos covering seven categories, including COVID-19, the NHS and medical ethics. Head on over to www.theaspiringmedics.co.uk today to ace your med school interview.